Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Nick. Uh, today I wanted to share something kind of cool with you. I was hanging out with my buddy Rich. I'll put a link down below to his YouTube channel. And I was just doing some glue ups for a leg. I needed some thicker stock and it, this eventually is gonna be I think one and three quarter by one and three quarter square or two inch square, I can't remember. But basically just gluing these up and one of the problems that people have when gluing up their, their leg stock is by the time you put glue on, and, and with these laminations, I'll put glue on both surfaces uh, just to avoid you know, any type of you know, starvation of glue in that area. Basically, it breaks the surface tension and anyways, make sure you get enough glue on there. But when putting your glue on and then you go to clamp them up, you get these pieces to that glue just wants to make it slide and slip around. There's a multitude of different ways in which to handle fixing that. Um, there's actually one way, if you, I don't know if you ever heard of it, but um, you can put salt, you put your glue down and then you can put uh, regular salt in between the joints. And then when you put them together, it's a little bit of a grit and it doesn't uh, let them slip as much and some of it gets crushed into the grain, some of it gets dissolved. Uh, that's a one option to have it work pretty decent. Uh, some people will just in the scrap areas, just brad nail them together. That doesn't necessarily work in this case because I'm dealing with pretty spot on measurements. I mean, I, I only have about a quarter inch wider than my finished leg needs to be. So I need to get them glued up relatively close. So that way if I joint them or run through the planer, I'm not undersizing them at that point. Or some people even nail in a finish nail and then let it protrude just a little bit, just to give it a, um, a little bit of a bite to the next piece. That way when you clamp them together. I don't necessarily like that one, especially with this particular glue up, because I have four of these that I have to do. And I'm gonna be putting multiple mortises in each of these legs. They're gonna get a minimum of four and a maximum of eight mortises. I don't know how big the mortises are or where they're located yet. so. Having hidden brad nails doesn't necessarily work out for me. Um, some people will use CA glue, like a super glue, and put a couple dabs on there, but that wouldn't give me as much open time. So I have my, my three pieces essentially set out here, and I'll show you my favorite way of doing this. And this is, like I said, when I was talking with Rich, it was one of those kind of aha moments, and he actually, halfway through was like, you know, you're, you're clamping this the wrong way. You need to, you know, you're not paying attention enough. And when I told him, I said, well, no, that's, that's to align the edges. And then I was like, mind blown. So he basically convinced me to share this because he's been doing woodworking for 10 years professionally full time to feed his kids and 20 years total. And he had never seen this. And it's just, I'm like, how could you not have seen it? But it just kind of goes as a reminder that some of the simplest things you know, maybe you don't necessarily think about. Anyway, so I got three, three quarter inch pieces to glue up here. Nothing super special. Like I said, with these laminations, I like to make sure to get plenty of glue in there. I don't want any voids or anything like that. I'm gonna be having a video uh, in the future um, showing that it really doesn't matter in this exact application if it's a little bit glue starved, but a lot of your joints, you know, you're gonna see that if the pieces of wood don't come together um, so I just make sure to get plenty of glue on there. And like I said, I'm going to be doing all the mating surfaces, both surfaces. Uh, is that 100% necessary? Not necessarily all the time, but better safe than sorry. Um, another tip too, I like using these uh, brayers. Uh, I'll leave a link to, to all this stuff uh, in the website article, and I'll put a link to that article down in the description below. But as far as spreading glue quickly, um, this is probably by far my favorite. You can use credit cards and spreaders and scrapers and all sorts of stuff, but you quite literally just roll it out like so, and you know it spreads it out nice and even. Does a really good job, especially when dealing with these laminations. Again, you're not gonna have forever uh, for an open time. This isn't necessarily the biggest glue up in the history of woodworking, but you get my point. But anyways, um, and I also made sure, I had a couple tiny warps in the outer pieces. I made sure that those are kind of opposing each other. You'll see more of that in a second but that way they'll kind of straighten up once they do get together. But anyway, so what you would normally do, so this middle piece, I'm going to add right away and then get the other side for the glue. And like I said, just basically evenly distribute it, get a nice thin layer and we're, we're kind of breaking that, that surface tension that the, the glue creates and making sure that you don't have any dry spots and you're not gonna have any voids. 
But like I said, it goes pretty quick. These, these spreaders work really, really well. So basically you would get this together like this. And if you were to go clamp this up, I mean, it is just sliding. As soon as you'd put like an F style clamp at anything on there. So what I like to do, I can actually turn this sideways. These are to rough length. I actually have them a little bit long, but you know, I'll just somewhat get them close at this point. But then if you take a parallel clamp or anything that you have, parallel clamps kind of work ideal in this case. And I'm gonna start on one end and get them somewhat together, somewhat buttoned up, somewhat close, and then tighten up your parallel clamp. And now we are completely flush here. Then you can come in with your F style clamp or whatever you have and crank this down pretty good. You're gonna see glue squeeze out form in both the joints. That's what you wanna see and get that nice and tight and then you can loosen this guy. And in this case with you know distribution and this kind of lamination, I like to see clamps about every six to eight inches. So come down a little bit and it's already off right here. Well, not until I tighten up that parallel clamp and get it nice and flush. Then I can come in with my clamps that'll actually do some of the heavy lifting. And again, super simple. Um, you can, you know, like I said, you can do the salt thing but then again, you have to have salt laying around. You have to hope it dissolves. You're getting salt all over the place sometimes, you know. I don't know. This just seems to go really quick. And when, like I said, when I was hanging out with my buddy Rich, he was just like, wow, that's... I'm like, yeah, it's, you know. If, at first he saw me clamping this on. And he's, dude, you're clamping it wrong. You're not paying attention. I'm like, no, that's to even out the edges. So just one of those things. And I definitely wanted to share this with you because I don't know... What, I'll have a timer on the side there, but uh, we'll see. I'm not able to see that before the, the editing essentially. But I would say less than five minutes, you can get a leg glued up like this and have it nice and straight. And what I'll do is I'll let this set now. In my shop with the relative humidity in my shop and the temperature and everything, I'll give this about 45, 30 to 45 minutes to kind of congeal we'll call it this glue to kind of set up a little bit and then I can come back with just a like a cabinet scraper or um, basically anything I want to try and scrape some of the glue this is like I said we had a little bit of spring here or a little bit of bow so I'll just try and bring that together by hand a little bit it really doesn't matter tighten that up a little bit And add another clamp. And this is, like I said, this is these are the clamps that are doing all the work. This the parallel clamp is just for alignment. I'll leave, like I said, I'll leave a link to everything, the Brayer, the F-style clamps, parallel clamps, all in the article. But so that basically is all the work that the parallel clamp is needed for. And I like to add a couple more clamps, but what I do is now if I set it like this. I'm not gonna get any glue squeeze out or anything to run on this top board. That way, if I do have to clean it up with say like a flush trim router bit or anything like that, I don't have any glue interfering with that bearing. And I come through with my smaller F style clamps and just kind of go in between them. That seems to work real well. So that's about it. I'm. I'm I want to thank Rich actually for trying to uh, convince me to show this because I said, this isn't really all that complicated. I'm sure a lot of people know about it. And he was like, you know, this is not something I've seen. And he, I only showed him this a day or two ago. And he, he said he's already been using the technique and he's, he can't believe he's done any other way of doing it. But, and of course I'm one clamp short. But anyways, I'll get that other clamp on there and I'll, uh, wrap it up for this one. But anyways, I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch that. If you guys have any other examples or ways or techniques to get glue ups like this without having necessarily that thick stock available to you, let me know down in the comments section. And this is actually gonna be a piece to the, well, the legs to a larger TV lift cabinet. And I'm just starting on that now. That is gonna be an awesome build to see. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as that bell notification because well, that's just how it works now to get notified. Or you can head over to nickferry.com. There's a lot more information 
on nickferry.com. I just mentioned nickferry.com twice. Now it's three times. See how I do that? That's marketing. That's retention. <laughs> Anyways, uh, like I said, thanks again, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.